I am so excited for today's tutorial. I can't even contain my excitement, guys. But let's just take a look at this beauty right here and this amazing matte finish. Before we get started with the tutorial, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about the product that made this tumbler possible. Now, you guys know that creating a matte finish tumbler has been something that has been really sought after in the tumbler community, and it's here. Before, creating something like this was a lot of hard work. It was a lot of sanding, and a lot of people just didn't wanna have to go through the process of sanding and sanding and sanding. So you didn't really see a lot of matte tumblers um, going around in the community, but it was a question that was asked a lot. I just wanna take the time to say thank you to DIY Epoxy for sending me this amazing product. You guys know that this product was debuted a couple of weeks ago on Jessica Flynn's YouTube channel, Flynn Sisters Boutique. So this is not a new product, but it is something that is new to me. And after that tutorial came out, I just knew I had to get my hands on this product, but lo and behold, the company reached out to me. They said they were watching Jessica's video and mine just happened to come up as a recommended video, which is so awesome. So they decided to reach out to me to see if I was interested in trying a couple of their products. And of course I said yes, because I am always down to try anything and I needed to get my hands on this anyways. So they sent this to me to try out along with their resin and a couple of other products as well. Now I did use their resin on this tumbler, but I'm going to create a separate video on a whole review on what I thought about their resin. So I'm not going to dive in too, too much in today's tutorial about what I think about this because I really want to try it out um, a little bit more so that I can really give you guys my full honest opinion on their epoxy. So far, so good, but we will dive into that in the next video. Today's video is all about final sand, which hopefully you guys can see that. When DIY Epoxy first was created, they were really geared more towards people who created countertops, resin countertops, and this formula was created pretty much for countertops. And then they realized that there was a whole Tumblr community out there that have been dying to create a matte finished Tumblr. So this product can be found on DIYepoxy.com. And again, hopefully it's not too, too bright where you guys can't see. But this is what the bottle looks like. They are actually in the process of revamping this whole component here, but this is eight fluid ounces of paste inside here, and you can purchase this for $9.99. So let's just go ahead and jump on in. All right guys, so let's get started with the prep of our tumbler. I already went in and sanded this tumbler. Now it's time to spray paint it. I'm using Krylon Flat White. So for the inspiration with this tumbler, I went on Pinterest. I know I wanted to do a Halloween themed matte tumbler um, with this product. And so I searched on Pinterest for like matte Halloween nails and I came across this set right here. And that is where I got the inspiration for this tumbler. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. So if you're ever looking for inspiration, Pinterest is definitely the way to go. Um, anyways, once your tumbler is fully dry, you're going to go ahead and grab your alcohol inks. We're using plum, orange, black, and this really pretty yellow. So we got a couple different brands here, but I'll list everything down below in the description so you guys can check it out. And I got this magic eraser that I cut up in cubes for all the different colors. 
first color we're going to start going in with is the plum and i was really just playing around with different colors to see how we could layer and blend to try to recreate i didn't have a red alcohol ink so i wanted to create a red like undertone um, again like i was pulling inspiration from that picture which really had a lot of red and orange um so i went in with the purple to try and give me that that pinky red base then we're going to go ahead on top and layer that. Um, now, I did go in with some black on top of that. And looking back, I wish I didn't go in as heavy as I did with the black. I guess I didn't really realize just how saturated and opaque the black is. Um, so definitely next time if I were to do this tutorial, I wouldn't go in so heavy with the black. I think I probably would have just stuck with the plum and orange and yellow to create those red and orange undertones but um, this is what I did this time and all in all I am still pretty happy with how the tumbler turned out but um, if this is something that you're gonna try and recreate I would definitely try and shy away from adding so much black because the silhouette in this tumbler design you can see is black and so I think it would definitely stand out more if the base of the tumbler wasn't so dark anyways <laughs> that's just a little insight now looking back um, at this design so now I'm going back over that with that plum because as you can see I noticed how dark that black was so I'm trying to kind of like blend and lighten it up so I did go back in with that plum color to sheer out that black since i already went in the top with that black and plum we're gonna have to match the bottom as well so i went ahead and just did the same exact thing down at the bottom um but yeah like i said if you don't want your tumbler to be as dark as mine i would stay away from the black So once I was done laying down the plum and the black, I'm going to go in with the orange. And here you're going to see how it starts to really pull out that red. Um, so I put a pretty good amount of orange and I start dabbing right on top of where I laid that plum and black. And you can just see it start transforming right away how it's turning like that orangey fiery red kind of color. And that is the color I was looking for and trying to achieve by layering. So I'm actually really, really happy um, that that part turned out. Like I said before, I probably wouldn't have gone in as heavy with the black. Um, but yeah, next time um, I'll definitely avoid using so much black. But either way, I'm still really happy with the red and orange that I got to pull out from there. So 
So again, the same thing that I did with the top, I'm doing at the bottom. Um, and then once I'm done blending all that in and layering, we will go in with the middle part. So now I'm going to go in with the yellow and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll pour a little bit of that yellow onto that magic eraser. And now I'm going to start in the middle of the tumbler. I want the middle of the tumbler to be more yellow and fading to orange towards the top and bottoms of the tumbler. So that's why I'm starting in the middle and making my way out. Um, like I said, I want the yellow to be pretty bright and not saturated with the other colors. So that's why I'm working in the middle and I'm making my way out again. Um, you can just see how I'm kind of dabbing in circular motions and up and down all around. Once we start getting closer to the um, other colors on the top and the bottom, you can see I'm kind of starting to blend that color in with each other. Another thing I probably would avoid next time is making the top and bottom colors um, so wide. I feel like I definitely would have wanted a little bit more yellow, but I think if I avoided all that black, then I probably would have been able to have um, some more yellows, orange, and reds. So that's just something to consider as well moving forward if this is something that um, you want to try to recreate. this point now I'm just gonna keep going back and forth between the different colors try and lighten up that black and blend in the colors a little bit better mind you we are gonna go in with an almost a full wrap of vinyl um, it's a pretty big piece so a lot of this is gonna be covered under the vinyl but still I wanted to have a nice good blend um, so that it looked like a really dark um, spooky evening <laughs> which is what I'm trying to achieve here so I'm going in with that orange again and blending out the bottom see how dark the bottom is but I just love how that orange pulls out that color underneath or just I just love how it looks I think this would also be great for like a fire tumbler so um, if you're going for a fiery look then I think the plum with the black and the orange would really create something super pretty. So once I've applied all the inks and I'm happy with the final look, you're going to want to go ahead and let that dry. I personally let this cure for 24 hours. Um, I decided to not go in with resin on top of this before the vinyl and just go straight in with the vinyl. So you can definitely decide to do resin first and then apply your vinyl. Um, but I decided to go in just straight with the vinyl. Um, if you're going to do it that way, make sure that your inks are completely, completely dried. All right, guys, so now it's time to get our design ready. So I went ahead and cut that out on my Cricut Maker, um, and I purchased this SVG file on Etsy. So I'll link the shop and the listing down below in the description so you can check it out if you want to purchase it for yourself. There's a lot of little pieces that need to be weeded out in this design. So just take your time, make sure you get it all, and then we will hop into applying our design onto the tumbler. Now that that's done, I took a couple of pieces of washi tape and just taped down my design onto the table so that I can apply my contact sheet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just apply that on and make sure to squeegee that really well. Um, now when I measured this onto the tumbler, I didn't really realize initially when I first cut it that the um, moon wasn't going to fit on. So you can see here that um, I kind of take, take the backing off and um, folded it so that I can apply it onto the tumbler. But then when I look at the tumbler, I realize that the moon's not gonna really fit on as well as like a couple of the other bats. So I just go ahead and uh, trim that up a little bit. Um, but again, you know, just double check that. <laughs> 
I was super excited to get this design onto the tumbler um, and didn't really take into account the moon and the extra bats there. Um, so yeah, there's that. So I uh, peeled back half of that um, backing of the contact sheet so that I can apply half of the vinyl at a time. Um, and then while I'm applying that, I'm smoothing it out with my little squeegee here um, to try and make sure that there aren't any little bubbles underneath. Now, just um, keep in mind that I'm going in straight over the alcohol ink with this vinyl. Um, so it does have a little bit of texture underneath with the alcohol inks because I did layer them and it wasn't completely smooth. But with black, that's one of the really neat things with black when you put epoxy over it because it tends to kind of hide any small little imperfections, which is really awesome. Um, it's not like any lighter colors. So any little tiny little imperfections that may be under the vinyl basically disappear once you apply your resin. Um, again, if you are doing lighter colors, then that may not be the case. So just keep that in mind if you're doing um, something like this on a lighter base. Once you have your vinyl fully wrapped onto the tumbler, you wanna go ahead and peel back your contact sheet very slowly and gently. Um, you can just see here, that's what I'm doing. And once that's on, you wanna let that sit onto your tumbler for a little bit so that it can adhere about an hour or so. Um, and then we'll jump into applying our resin. All right guys, so now we're gonna go in with our first coat of resin. As usual, I am gonna be using the Counterculture Ultra Clear Fast Set, which is their fast setting resin. It is dry to the touch in two hours and fully cured within 24. When I am filming tutorials, this is my go-to, especially on my base so that I can speed up my turnaround time, um, as well as using this as my glitter adhesive. So I'm gonna go in with this one as my base coat try and get um, the first layer on top of the vinyl cured super fast and then as we move forward I am gonna move over to the DIY um, epoxies artisan resin and like I stated before in the beginning of this tutorial I am in the testing phase of this epoxy but in our next video or the video after that I will be doing a full review to let you guys know my uh, final thoughts how it worked for me and how I like it and yeah just give you my thoughts on that um, so for right now we're just applying the counterculture um, ultra clear facet you're going to want to let that cure fully and then you can go ahead with your second top coat of resin. All right, so once your first layer of resin is cured, you do wanna go in with a second. For this part, I am using the Artisan Art Resin by DIY Epoxy. Again, like I said before, I will be doing another video talking to you guys about um, how I like their resin and just more details on their resin and how I like it and how it performs for me. This is a two-part resin and you're gonna be doing a one-to-one -one ratio. So the same like all of the other epoxies that I've used in the past. Um, you can see here um, for this top layer, I went in with a 7.5 milliliters of each side. Um, and then I'm going to apply that all over the tumbler. All right, so once you got your resin mixed up really good, you wanna just go ahead and apply that all over the tumbler. Make sure to put a pretty good generous amount of your um, resin on top of the tumbler. One thing you wanna know is that if you're gonna be doing a matte finish tumbler, you want your layer of resin to be really, really even, like the most perfect coat of resin <laughs> that you've ever done in your life. So actually after this coat, I do go in with a second coat 
um, because there was a couple of little bumps down at the bottom that I wanted to sand out. Um, so I did that and then I go in with a second coat of the Artisan Art Resin. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be doing this technique. You do want your uh, layer of resin, like I said, the finished layer, to be as perfect as possible. Those little imperfections will show through, unfortunately, if you're going to be doing a matte finish. Once those two layers are fully cured, then we can go ahead and move on to the final step, which is our final sand. All right, so now that my layers of resin are nice and cured, you can see just how beautiful that finish is on the tumbler. It's super shiny, nice and even. I have to say that so far I'm liking this epoxy. The finish is really good, nice and even. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of see for yourself what the finish looks like. So before we get started with the final sand, you do want to go ahead and wet the base of your tumbler. Um, so I'm just taking my gloved hand, putting it under the water, splashing it onto the tumbler, and then we're going to apply the final sand. So you can see there I was showing you the tube, what it looks like taking my hand under the water and just kind of splashing that onto the tumbler just to get it nice and wet once we do that I'm gonna just put some directly onto the tumbler and use my hands to rub that in now for this part you can use a non abrasive sponge um, or um, yeah like a non abrasive like little sponge um, fortunately I didn't have one so I went in with my hands and I like using my hands a lot so I feel like I can feel what I'm doing and I have more control um, so yeah uh, it will take a little bit longer to do it with your hands just because um, you can go a little bit harder with a, a non abrasive sponge uh, but like I said I didn't have one and I kind of like having the control of my hands anyways so I did have to go in a couple of times doing this uh, because I didn't want to wear down the epoxy too much or go t too far down into where I'll be rubbing into the alcohol inks. Um, I did a little bit at a time. So I think I went in a total of like maybe four times, maybe even five times, uh, till I was completely satisfied with the finish of the tumbler. So I decided to do it little by little. You can see here that I'm just rubbing my hands all over the tumbler, um, going up and down, round and round, and also making sure to get the bottom as well. So here is the first time I rinsed it off, and then once I'm done rinsing it off, I take a, a dry microfiber towel to dry it off um, so I can see the finish. Now, now it is still pretty pretty shiny here um, and so that's why I do go in a couple a few more times um, with this same exact step so you just want to go ahead and yeah just pretty much do that take your time make sure you're rubbing evenly um, make sure you're using enough product and that's pretty much it once you get the finish you're looking for which is the matte finish you're done Hope you guys really enjoyed today's tutorial let me know what you think about this matte finish and this awesome product is this something that you've already got your hands on have you heard of this before have you always wanted to have a matte finish on your tumbler but just didn't know how to achieve it this is so so easy so don't forget to check out the description down below give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted every time we upload a brand new video thank you guys so much again for watching and i will see you in our next video